Welcome back, everyone. So what does it take to have meaningful relationships? That can be hard to answer as relationships are so complex. But experts say if you want to get the most out of all the connections in your life, there are a few things that need to be done. We thought we would dive into this today in Real Talk. Kara stuck around, author and mindset consultant Stan Pearson, and... Clinical social worker Kristen Mize is back. Welcome, guys. Yay. Happy New Year. Oh, I'm you that. Uh, happy to see you. Okay, I thought I'd love all these because, of course, we're always, you know, in January focusing on uh, things we want to improve, ways we want to get better, do better. So, a uh, family therapist expert Tiffany Brown offered tips to cultivating healthy relationships in your life not necessarily just with your spouse. I'd love for you guys to weigh in. Number one, evaluate what you need. So this helps identify the relationships that aren't meeting those needs and require consideration about whether they are worth all the effort and all the nurturing. Finding that solution, navigating through the changes. Does it make me a better person? Does it make me a worse person? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this for your relationships. Have you been able to do this? Because I think this also comes with some maturity. For sure. Yeah. yeah, boundaries in the very beginning. Uh, it's kind of like a job application. There are the requirements, yes. and then there's the preferred requirements. So I like a fair requirement list, uh, and also that helps you to avoid you know, some early pitfalls right. that you might experience. Right, but I mean, are you really sitting down, Kristen, and <laughs> thinking about your relationships in the new year and evaluating those and which ones, you know, are they meaningful? And if they, if they aren't, what to do about them? Well, I think, you know, the beginning of a new year, we always want to look at what are our intentions for this year. And I think relationships take paying attention to all the time, especially in the beginning of the year. It's easy to remember, you yes. know, what do I want to focus on? But I think it does take a level of maturity to decide what is working for me and what isn't. It can take a lot of courage, too. You know, if you're used to putting up with things mm -hmm. that just aren't meeting your needs or even on the air of harmful to you, yes. then um, it takes a big person or bravery sometimes to say, you know what, this isn't working for me. Yeah, right. Yes, so, if you're dealing with this energy been, Yeah, and you've been taught your whole life to just yes. accept things yes. as they are mm -hmm. or be kind, be kind and not being treated that Right, <laughs> and just to sort of go with the flow because it's easier on everybody else. I'm, I'm definitely yeah. guilty of that. Sure. And I was thinking when you were reading that too, like why is it so much easier for us, like a a girlfriend relationship that I would have to tell them like, oh, like I need this or I need that. Like you're very open with your friends, mm -hmm. but I feel like if I needed something for my partner, I would be less apt to tell him directly than I mm -hmm. would be like a friend situation, which is so strange. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I know he'd be super receptive to it and fine, but mm -hmm. maybe it is also like just stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit and saying like, oh, I need to change everything that we're doing because it's not mm -hmm. working for me. <laughs> right, right, right. You know? You're not saying everything, yeah. but maybe just a certain shifts that you want to start seeing. Right. So yeah, I, I think it's interesting. I, I don't think immediately I thought identify, relate, like as if I was making a list. <laughs> a list. I, don't yeah. no. I don't necessarily do that, but there have been some in the last year I can think of that I intentionally was like, like, this isn't so yeah. good for me right now. I think yeah. I'm just going to focus on my family. Right. So I am, you are being intentional. If right. you have those thoughts and then mm -hmm. you put a solution into place. Mm -hmm. All right, what do you think about the next one? Gratitude, Kara, you're good at that. You're always mm -hmm. writing yeah. notes. I Aww. like that. Yes. So, um, so <laughs> it says the relationships that do meet our needs, they need to be celebrated and acknowledged regularly. This way, when the relationship is in a season of change, we understand and appreciate that it will prevail because you go back and think about, I guess, all the joy and all the blessings that the relationship has brought you. I like that. So do you do that? Do you meaningfully uh, try to do that and just, you know, remind your friends how much you care about them, whether that's a card, a text, a phone call, a voicemail? Kara yeah. does, yeah. doesn't yeah. like that. <laughs> Kara doesn't well, like voicemail. for that the other day. Yeah, you did. Well, mostly from the 50 and up group. The 50 and up group were like, voicemails are amazing. They're important. I love hearing your voice. Yeah. Yes, exactly. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, I just think it's so important to obviously, I think that's something we should remind ourselves of every day is just to feel gratitude and to make sure to tell people, it only takes a second of your time to tell people how much you love them and appreciate yes. them. Mm -hmm. And it's yes. something oftentimes we take for granted. Right. right. No matter how big or small, like the phone call, and nowadays it's, you know, virtual, uh, let's say virtual currency is important because yes. social media is a thing. Right. So thanking people, commenting, but not letting that replace no. real life interaction. Yeah. Right. It's just an accessory with everything else. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I love that. I say that all the time. Like you don't do it in, instead of, it's in addition to. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I so think important. The human, the human component of that is so important. But even, um, and also speaking of interesting, I think it's a lot easier to express gratitude in 
friend relationships. Yeah. It's very easy in our marriages and in our intimate relationships to be focused on the things that bother us. Yes. I don't know, maybe it's just yes. me, uh, no, no, but a good exercise that I've learned is before you want to air your issues that are maybe negative in a relationship, uh -huh. start with what you're grateful for yeah. in that other person. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it can create a lot of changes. Right. Oh, that's so good. Like yeah. daily or, or keep it a practice. I would even say, though, no. wouldn't it need to be done on a different day? Like, wouldn't it be a little bit contrived if I was like, Jim, I love the way you help me around the house. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But I'll tell you what, you do that. It was one a more time. Right, right. Gonna, right? Like, it yeah, almost right. feels like you need to be cultivating the gratitude right. more. Build so that then up. when you do set the boundaries, mm -hmm. which is the next one, mm -hmm. it makes it better. Right. right? Yeah. 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 Build Possibly. it up. Yeah. Fill yeah, that. Jim would Fill see that right account. It's <laughs> like, I love, love, love. And then I'm like, right, wait a minute. That was yes. too many pet names yes. in one yes. sentence. In one sentence. What is going yeah. up? <laughs> All right. And the next one is setting the boundaries, which you touched upon. Um, and, and, and again, you also did too, Kristen, in, in that it takes a lot of courage, especially mm -hmm. if we've been taught to be good friends yeah. or be a great sister or, or whatever, employee. Mm -hmm. But you really have to. And I think mm -hmm. when you do step out and take that that step to do so, wow, how empowering is that? Have you had to do that recently? For sure, because I've realized that people will treat you how they meet you, mm -hmm. and then you have to make sure that you treat people, you teach people how to treat you. Right. Yes. And that helps you avoid all types of toxic relationships, whether it be platonic or romantic. Mm. Say that again, people treat you how they meet you? People treat yeah. you how they meet you, and then you, make, you have to make sure to teach them how to treat you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, that's a constant that process, for sure. I'm going to rewatch mm -hmm. this tonight. That's good. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Have you set some boundaries you can think of? Oh, definitely. I tough? think you're drawing a line in terms of how you expect to be treated and how you are going to show your love or your um, relationship with that person. And if you have a low bar, guess what? <laughs> Yeah. People are going to meet it every time. Right, yeah. right. exactly. Yeah. And right. so, but I do think going back to, you know, sort of self-development and growth, it does take a lot of that awareness to decide what you think you deserve. Right. Right. You yeah, know. and say so some of it is just like how you were raised and yes. how you approach situations, but then the rest of it comes, I think, a lot with maturity. Sure. And, and the older you get, the more you realize that, hey, it's okay to ask for this or yes. it's okay to do this or because, no. you know, right. or, or say no. Yeah. Time is, time is valuable. Yeah, I was telling yes. Sherry, who's a panelist um, here, that I, I want this was going to be the year of no. And she goes, mm -hmm. no, don't, don't be negative about it. Have this be the year of the, as I like to say now, the hell yeah. It's got to be, yes. it can't just be a yeah, a yeah. mediocre yeah. <laughs> Right. It's got to be, right. sorry for cursing, but it's, it's, it's impactful. Right. right. Like and so scenario. switch it mm -hmm. and, and be okay with it, you know, mm -hmm. by setting that boundaries. But it is scary. I've said it a few times and I feel yeah. like an awful person. Mm -hmm. Why is yeah. that? I don't How know. Are you? What? <laughs> like, how are you going to do it? About that. I am getting better. How are you now? You have three kids. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you better start. I don't get out much, obviously. I don't do anything. What do you mean? Well, you're coming to my house on Friday at 4, y'all. Girl, I'm not That's me. I do think with practice, that gets easier because my clients ask me all the time, you know, with practice, it does get easier. If it's not in your natural language to be able to set a boundary or to say no or to say hell yeah and go after that, right. then, I, again, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to do that in my tw early 20s. Yes, I, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but we're going to work on that. Maybe, okay. oh my God, maybe we'll have a goal Aww. session. Or no, maybe we just drink wine and have snacks. A goal That's session. Good too. Yeah. I mean, for us. A vision board during yeah, the wine. She's, is like, <laughs> she's like, that sounds awful. Okay, <laughs> how about this one? Stuff. Understand that people change. So um, um, you do this, Kara, about, like, I, I think because you have set, well, we all do, but I, I know especially just her. She's got the high school friends, mm -hmm. the college friends, the friends of Lee's wives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it, you, you have to understand that people go through times of change. You go through that as well. Um, and when is this relationship nurturing you and when is it not? Mm -hmm. Again, and, that, and, and that's hard because you want to give people the benefit of the doubt because that's what you would hope for, yeah. that they would give you. Absolutely. Working on growing, I, I truly believe if you're not growing with someone, you're growing apart. So even if you're friends or your romantic relationship, your partner, if they have an interest, it's important for you to at least have an interest 
in that interest. <laughs> yes, so, right. Because mm -hmm. if not, then that's when they begin to grow and maybe someone else finds interest in their interests and that could be friendships and that's the difference between growing together and growing apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think, Kristen? How do you, um, I mean, it's like, again, about prioritizing. Yes. You're being open-minded, we all change, but yet you also, you have to be stay true to what's good for you in your life at this particular time. Absolutely, I think it's important to remember that just because we've been friends for a long time, you know, I do believe in phases of life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I have, right, like, high school friends, college friends, um, grad school friends, Boston friends, blah, blah, mom friends. And yeah. um, and I think, you know, the stronger the relationships are, each person in that relationship accepts where you are. And if you yes. are going through a change and you can be like, you know, I get it that we were very close and we saw each other all the time in the beginning of, let's say, being a mom, but then we moved to a different area. Shift, and yes. It does. <laughs> and it, it's okay. It doesn't mean you're not necessarily exactly. friends. But you don't right. have to be friends with someone who maybe is going in a different direction right. just because you've been friends. Are Kara and I right. in that friends group? Wow. And Stan? Because you, you had a new friend. And you had a new friend. And you had a new friend. I was like, I'm going to be in that group. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We hope that we helped you prioritize. It's always a great reminder to me. And, you know, we're setting these goals in the new year. We want to hear from you. Uh, how do you uh, nurture your relationships? Let us know on our Facebook page.